Hello there. It is March. This means that it is no longer summer, which is tremendously upsetting. However, this presents the opportunity for us to talk about the books that I read in the summer, which for those unfamiliar with how Australia works, that's December, January, and February. So I read 33 books in the summer, uh, six in December, seven in January, and 20 in February, because we were just really going hard. <laughs> and these, these are those books right here, and I'm going to rank them because art is not subjective and two very different works of art should be in direct competition with each other, obviously. So, the tiers are pretty self-explanatory. We have all-time fave, we have destroyed me, <laughs> which is a good thing. We love, we love destruction of oneself when reading. A good time, which means, you know, I would recommend it, but it didn't destroy me. This was a book and I read it. Uh, for those like solid three star reads straight down the middle. Nothing super exciting, but nothing dreadfully terrible. We have Not For Me, which is as mean as I can get. I, I think I, um, I think I named this tier, uh, an attempt was made or something vaguely snarky. And I was like, I can't do that. This is literature. People have written it and, and it means a lot to them. And I don't want to insinuate that that their attempt was not was not good so this is that and then we have responsible for the perpetuation of stigmatization of mental illness which is also pretty self-explanatory all right should we just get started let's start from the start and and and, and go i don't want to spend too long on each of these because i don't want to waste your time but let's begin the prophet by khalil gibran honestly this was a book and i read it it was a very pretty nice book with lots of pretty words lots of morals but i don't think it was a good time I don't know. I do think I need to reread it and like take some time with it. We have Behold the Dreamers by Mbolo Mbwe. Uh, this is probably also a book that I read, to be honest. It definitely was not a good time. Uh, everyone was very sad, <laughs> but it was very well written, very well written, very believable, well-constructed characters. Um, I would definitely recommend that you do read it. Uh, just don't expect to have fun. <laughs> a Pattern of Islands by Arthur Grimble honestly was a pretty good time. Skinny English man in the 1920s goes to tropical island and has absurd experiences. Uh, basically just lots of little short stories about the Kiribati, which is very, very interesting and cool to learn about. So that was a good time. Season of Migration to the North. I didn't really understand what was happening. This is another one that I'm gonna need to like maybe watch some videos about and then reread so that I actually know what I'm supposed to get from it. Cause uh, like, I can tell it was good. I just didn't know why, you know? Who will slay the wolf? Honestly destroyed me. Like, not gonna lie. It's poetry from a guy. This is my book for Kosovo. And it was actually like pretty decent. Like. As poetry goes, I'm not a huge poetry person. I do dabble, but it was very enjoyable and very soul destroying. The Teacher of Cheops, kind of the definition of a three star read, to be honest. It was good, but it was, I mean, it was fine. It was, yeah, a book about ancient Egypt, did lots of pyramid related things. Not a whole lot to say about that one. A Farewell to Arms. <laughs> Hemingway needs to calm down because my s I'm not okay. This is this is a story about the First World War and it's sad in many ways. Mostly in the ending way. The Ardent Swarm I think is a good time, you know. I think it is. It's about a beekeeper battling some hornets. That's all you really need to know. And has a very cool cover. Look at this. How aesthetic. Spinning by Tilly Walden. I I didn't love it that much. I mean, it was really good, but I think it's a book and I read it. I mean, this is not like mean. I did like all these books. It just didn't really, I don't know. I don't know if me in my life at the current stage that I'm at could like fully relate to slash appreciate everything that was happening in this book. It was like, it was, I do recommend it. Chess? Oh, did it destroy me? It's kind of in between. You know, I'm gonna put it down here for the moment. Liable to change. We'll just, we'll put it in a good time for now. But it did have destructive potential. So long a letter, just not for me. I think this is another book that I maybe need to revisit and give some more time and attention to. Because it is about some like pretty deep stuff, but I just wasn't really vibing with it, you know. Light boxes. 
it was okay. It was, it was okay. <laughs> I do enjoy like weird absurdist kind of stories, but I, I just didn't really connect with this one that much. Into thin air. Uh, yeah, that was that was that was a. Uh, mm. Tears were shed. <laughs> Tears Were Shed, it's a book about climbing mountains and the mountains not wanting you to climb them and punishing you. The Mist by Stephen King I think was a good time. Uh, it was horror, it wasn't particularly scary, there weren't particularly good characters, but was it an enjoyable two or so hours? Yes. I think I'll put both Agatha Christie books in here as well, um, just because th they don't really they're not super emotional books, they didn't destroy me, but they were definitely very fun and I did enjoy them. And they both got four stars, I think. The Old Man and the Sea, we can put next to the other Hemingway. It really is a classic, like, very compelling, very well written. Not a whole lot happens, but what does happen is very tragic. <laughs> but it's not like fully tragic, it's a little bit fun and hopeful and sad. I feel a bit bad about this, but the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society was just kind of not for me. It was a bit slow and like it was fun, the characters were fun, the, the the location was very interesting and unique and I love I love letters. I do love letters but I feel like a whole novel of just letters can like become a little tedious. Lot of House 5. All time fave. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about this because I've heard mixed reviews but it was just nuts. It was bonkers. It was beautiful. It was tragic. It was fabulous. I can like see how it would be hard to follow but I read it in like one sitting I think so I like knew what was happening and it was just so good. I, I can't really explain it but I enjoyed it very much. Sylvia Plath is a tough one because I wasn't really thinking. I wasn't really thinking while reading. I was kind of just reading. The way I approach most poetry is I kind of just try- don't even try to understand it. I just am like, hmm, these are nice pretty words and they kind of like help me to sleep. <laughs> I don't know if I could call Ariel a good time. It didn't destroy me, but this feels too low. I'm gonna put it in a good time because, you know, Sylvia Plath. So fun. A General Theory of Oblivion. Uh, I think this was a book that I read. It was- it had a very interesting premise, but the execution was a little lacking, I think. I would still recommend reading it, but I think- I don't know. There was p potential for more. I think it could have been a bit more like chess in a kind of like losing your damn mind way. Yeah, I would have liked more more about the central character's mental state because I think that was like the most interesting part and we didn't really get into that a whole lot, so. It's still very cool, it's about the, the Angolan independence and a woman who locks herself, who bricks herself into her apartment for 30 years and eats pigeons. Oh, the work. Um, I mean, the work by Scott Hutchison. It is just a book of lyrics, but it is a book of all the Frightened Rabbit lyrics. And this is extremely highly rated on Goodreads. I think because everyone who gets it is a Frightened Rabbit fan and is like, these songs have literally made me the human being who I am. And it's like just a book of lyrics, but it's sir, it's sir, it's sir, I, oh, it just, my soul. <laughs> like the songs in here, means so much that it just it has to be an all-time- I mean it's like right it's I keep it it's the only book that I like display it's amazing listen to Frightened Rabbit I would listen to the songs instead of reading this if you've never like heard of them but if you're a fan I do recommend having this just about to flip through and crush you Giovanni's Room uh it definitely destroyed me is it an all-time fave probably not but it was five stars. It's kind of the price of salt, but with men. <laughs> it wasn't really like the price of salt, actually. Although, while we're talking about it, they can go together in the same category. But they're, I don't know, are they, they're not that similar. They're just both gay classics and there's not that many gay classics. So I think that's why I'm like drawing a comparison in my mind. Giovanni's Room, it reminded me a lot of um, uh, The Sun Also Rises, which I haven't read for like five years. So I could be like totally getting that wrong. I think just cause they both have Paris in them and of a set at roughly the same time, but it was very good. It was very dense and very emotionally packed. The Price of Salt also 
Um, I think I've talked a little bit about this in the past. It was very strange, but it was good. And like, you know, Kate Blanchett. The Queen's Gambit. It was surprisingly amazing. Like, I really loved it. I really enjoyed it. It was very easy to read, fast paced, but also very deep. Lots of themes. And it was about chess, and I'm really into chess. So, yeah, I loved it. I would recommend reading the book. I haven't watched the series, but if you like the series, you probably like the book. I don't know how similar they are. China Mayville, this is an essay about London. <laughs> um, it was good, but it didn't really do a whole lot for me. There were some cool pictures and some cool words, and it's very bleak. The Greenhouse? Um, did it destroy me? No, it was exceptional, but I think it just has to be a good time. About a man who is really into gardening and he goes to this very obscure, isolated European monastery to be a rose farmer and he has a child and it's just a very wholesome time. Eyes Too Dry is a graphic novel by two Australian authors slash artists. It was alright. <laughs> I mean, lots of like heavy stuff and I don't know if I was like in the right headspace to deal with that. So uh, this may be Warren so reread as well. We'll see. Seven years in Tibet. I think it was just too long. Like it had some good parts, but it was just, it dragged for a little bit, you know? It could have, I don't know, been like 50 pages shorter and then maybe it would be a good time. Aya, I'm just not the demographic is what I learned from this experience. This is just this is for people who are not me. <laughs> the Silent Patient. A uh, horse walks into a bar. This was really good. This was so good. This was, um, this destroyed me very much, so I would highly recommend this. Highly, highly recommend this. It's about a comedian, it's one stand-up show, and you're there the whole time for the whole ride, and it is a journey. Then we have Reading the Ceiling, which was also not really my thing, to be honest. It was, there were good parts, but it just overall was not, I don't know, I didn't, yeah, <sighs> It was fine. So that's the uh, that's the final the final final ranking of everything. Do I want to move chess up? No. Maybe yes. I think I do. I think we'll move chess up, and that'll be the final the final rankings. The two up here are definitely not for everyone. This will probably not do a whole lot for you if you don't listen to Frightened Rabbit. Um, and if you don't listen to Frightened Rabbit, I would recommend you maybe give them a go. I would start with The Midnight Organ Fight if you're into more like indie stuff. And if you're into more rockier stuff, I would start with um, Pedestrian Verse. And then Slaughterhouse Five, I know is not for everyone, but it's one of those classics that just really did something for me. All of these books I recommend. Maybe the Hemingways not so much. They might be less universally appealing, but I think everything else- well, also maybe these two. <laughs> if you want to try a classic, if you're not a classic person, maybe go for chess instead of like Giovanni's room or a Hemingway. All of these were quite- were quite good. And then all of these, for the right audience, um, I think also solid reads. So that is that. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll see ya later. Let me know what your favorite summer and or winter read was because um, I'd love some recommendations from you lovely, lovely people.